All right, I am calling this meeting to order at 4.35 p.m. We're going to start with an territorial acknowledgement. I'd like to respectfully acknowledge that the SFSS is located on the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, including the Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Coquitlam, and Katsi nations. Unceded means that these territories have never been handed over, sold, or given up by these nations, and we are currently situated on occupied territories. Now, before we move on to roll call attendance, um, and before we begin today, I'd just like to outline a few things, starting with some of the procedures we use as council, as we do have guests in attendance. First of all, if you'd like to speak, please type list in the chat and you'll be called upon. Councillors will be given first priority to speak and I will go down the list in order. When it is your turn, I'll ask you to unmute and you will be given two minutes. If you go over the two minute speaking time, you will be cut off due to us being stretched for time today. If you have already spoken once during discussion on an item, you'll have to wait until all others who wish to speak have had the opportunity. If you'd like to directly respond to any comments made during the discussion, you may type star in the chat and you'll be given the opportunity for a quick response. Please use this only um, for comments directly addressed to yourself. Since we do have many non-counselors here today, we will be voting on contentious issues via roll call. And counselors, if you wish to abstain on a motion, you may be asked to state your reasoning as abstaining on a motion is typically reserved for when not enough information is present to make a decision. Now, as you all know, we will be discussing some sensitive topics today, and I'd like to set some expectations for everyone. First of all, council is a safe space for everyone, which means that we will not tolerate any disrespectful or discriminatory comments or displays or action. I want us to foster constructive and inclusive conversation today regarding the matters at hand, and today's discussion will not be centered on the details of the incident that occurred. Rather, today's discussion will be centered on how DSUs and constituency groups can help support um, Black, Indigenous, and BIPOC students at SFU that have been impacted by the recent events. I'd like to urge everyone to make efforts to understand our differences with respect, and should anyone speak out or act in a discriminatory manner, you may be removed from the meeting. All right, we're now moving on to roll call of attendance. When I call on your DSU, please state your name, your pronouns, and your accessibility needs, if any. Archaeology. When I call on the rep, can you please raise your hand so I can ask you to unmute? Hi, um, the president from ARC is trying to come in rep place of our ARC rep, but uh, they are just currently trying to get in. So they should be here in a minute, but our ARC rep isn't going to be here. It's going to be the President Rory instead. All right. Thank you for letting me know. Um, just something to note that non councillors will not be able to vote on motions, but it is welcome to have your president attend. Bachelor of Environment. See Bachelor of Environment rep present. Please raise your hand to ask to unmute. Hi, sorry, just difficulties with that. Um, my name is Bradley, Bachelor of Environment Student Union. Uh, pronouns are he, him, his, and my accessibility needs are met. Thank you, Bradley. Behavioral Neuroscience. Biology. Hi, my name is Nick. My pronouns are he, him, his, and all my accessibility needs have been met. Thank you, Nick. BPK.
Hi, I'm Josh Ham, BPKSA. Um, my pronouns are he, him, his, and my access needs are met. Thank you. Business. Hi, my name is Monish. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his, and my accessibility needs have been met. Thank you. Chemistry. Is the chemistry rep present? Oh, hi. Somehow I couldn't unmute myself before. Um, hi, my name is Gwen. Pronouns are she, her, hers, and my accent needs to be met. Thank you, Gwen. Cognitive science. Hi there. My name is Roland Poe from the Cognitive Science Student Society. Pronouns are he, him, his, and my accessibility needs are currently being met. Thank you, Roland. Computer science. Uh, hi, my name is Ryan. Uh, he, him, his. All my access needs are met. Thank you, Ryan. Criminology. Hi, Charlotte, criminology rep. Um, she, her, hers. All my accessibility needs are met. Thank you, Charlotte. <clears throat> Data science. Hey, uh, my name is Michael and Matthew. Um, he, him, his, and my current accessibility I currently met. Thank you. Earth science. Hi, my name is Alex. My pronouns are they, them, and my accessibility needs are met. Thank you, Alex. Economics. Hello? Okay. Hi, my name is Sandra. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and all my accessibility needs are met. Thank you, Sandra. Education. Oh, there we go. Hi, uh, Adrian. Pronouns are she, her, and all my access needs are being met right now. Thank you, Adrian. Engineering. Hi, my name is Alvin, uh, he, him, his, all my accessibility needs are met. Thank you, Alvin. English. Hi, my name is Liz. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and all of my access needs are met. Thank you, Liz. Environmental science. Hi, um, my name is Caitlin, um, pronouns she, her, hers, and all my access needs have been met. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. French. Hi, my name is Kylie from French Student Union, pronouns she, her, hers, and all of my accessibility needs have been met. However, I will need to leave about 15 minutes early, so about 5.45 today. All right, thank you, Kylie. Gender, Sexuality, and Women's Studies. Hi, uh, my name is Devin. Uh, I use she, her, hers pronouns. Uh, I am in a public space in terms of accessibility needs. Hopefully you can still hear me and all of that, but uh, due to my work schedule, I can't be home at the current moment. Great, thank you, Devin. Geography. Is the geography rep present?
humanities. Humanities sends the regrets. Interactive arts. Hi, Brian, he, him, his, all my accessibility needs have been met. Thank you, Brian, international studies. Hello, everyone. My name is Aaliyah. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and all of my access needs have been met. Thank you. Labor studies. Hi, my name is Justin Chen. Um, he, him, his, and all my access needs are met. Thank you. Linguistics. Is the linguistics rep present? You can list your pronouns and accessibility needs in the chat, Brie. See if you can unmute. Hi, yeah, it works now. Um, my name is Brie. I am the uh, Linguistics Student Union rep. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and all my accessibility needs have been met. Thank you. Mechatronics. Hi, my name is Kimia, she, hers, and my access accessibility needs are met. Thank you, Kimia, MBBSU. Hi, right, my name is Kyle, go by he, him, all my needs are met. Thank you, Kyle. Operations research. Hi, um, my name is Ash, uh, I'm ORSU rep. Uh, all my accessibility needs have been met. Hi Ash, can you please state your pronouns as well? Uh, he, him, his, sorry about that. Thank you. Philosophy. And my name is Tony, he, him, his, all my access needs are met. Thank you, Tony. Physics. Leave physics since their regrets. PSSU. Political science rep present. Yes, there we go. Now I can now I can unmute myself. Hi everyone. My name is Helen. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and all my access needs are met. I'm just going to keep my camera off just for the first part of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Yes, Aislinn, you have something you'd like to say? Oh, no, I'm the, was the PSU next? Physics? Oh, my bad. Sorry, are you here on behalf of physics? No, no, uh, psychology. Psychology is next. So okay. introduce yourself. Um, hi, my name's Aislinn. Uh, Pronoun, pronouns she, her. Um, I'm in place of Tiffany. I'm the at large rep, um, and my accessibility needs are met. Thank you. Society of Arts and Social Sciences. Sorry, it wasn't letting me unmute. Hi, my name is Simran. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and all my access needs have been met. Thank you, Simran. Sociology and anthropology.
Hi, my name is Kayla. I am the rep of S Sasu and pronoun she, her, hers, and all my accessibility needs are met. Thank you. Thank you, Kayla. Software systems. Hi, my name is Mahek, and my pronouns are she, her, hers, and all my accessibility needs are met. Thank you. Statistics. Oh, hi, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, uh, hi, my name is Stephanie. I'm the representative from statistics. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and my all my accessibility needs are met. Thank you. Sustainable Energy Engineering Student Society. Um, I'm Maven Sarah. I'm the um, rep for the um, Sustainable Energy Engineering Student Society, uh, she, her, and my accessibility needs are met. Thank you, Maven. World Literature. Hi, my name is Kishtalj. Um, she, her, hers, and all my access needs have been met. Thank you. We're now moving on to our constituency group representatives, starting with Disability and Neurodiversity Alliance. Hey, my name is Serena. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And for my accessibility needs, if I am stuttering or talking slow, or you, if you basically don't, don't understand what I'm saying, let me know. I'll also might ask for clarification given that there aren't any captions on this meeting. Thank you, Serena. Unfortunately, we were unable to enable live caption on this meeting due to having to switch over to another account to have secured sign-in. Um, in the future, we will always have um, live captions enabled. FNSA. the FNSA rep present. Out on campus. Sense the regrets. Student Athletic Advisory Committee. Uh, hi there, my name is Ryan. My pronouns are he, him, his, and all my access needs are met. Thank you, Ryan. Soka. Hi there, my name is Juanita. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and my accessibility needs are met. Thank you, Women's Center Collective. Hi, my name is Nisha. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and my access needs are met. Thank you. We'll now move on to our board of directors, starting with the president. Hi, everyone. My name is Asab. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and all my access needs have been met. Thank you. VP External Relations. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Samad Reza, VP External Relations, uh, pronouns are he, him, his, and all my accessibility needs are met, thank you. Thank you, Corporate Gildersleeve, or sorry, VP Finance. Yeah, hi everyone, Corp. my name is Corbett Gildersleeve, pronouns are he, him, his, and all my access needs are met generally. I'm at home like many of you, but I'm basically Either roadway, which might be a little bit noisy from time to time when I'm speaking. Thank you. So if, if you need me to repeat anything, please let me know. Thank you, Corbett. VP Student Services. Okay. Hello. My name is Matthew 
Provost, current VP Student Services. My pronouns are he, him, his. Um, as of right now, my accessibility needs. Um, my Wi-Fi um, has kind of been on and off today. So if that happens, I'll be turning off my camera, but we'll still be present. So pretty much it. Thanks, Zaid. Thank you, Matt. VP Student Life. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And for access needs, I'm just eating. I don't know what meal it is anymore, but I'll be eating. All right, thank you, Jennifer. VP University Relations. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Gabe. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his, and my access needs are met. Thank you, Gabe. Both, oh, sorry, at large representative. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, hi, my name is Bokris. I go by she, her, and hers. Access need, I do need to keep my camera off today. All right, thank you. Are any of our faculty representatives present? Please raise your hand. Faculty of Environment. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Anuki. My pronouns are she, hers, and access needs have been met. Thank you. Faculty of Science. Wei Chan. Oh, sorry. Hi, uh, my name is Wei Chen Kua. Um, I'm the science representative. Um, I go by pronouns he and his, and my access needs are met. Thank you. Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Hello, I'm Sude. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and my access needs are met. Thank you. Our FCAT rep. Hello everyone, I'm Heather. I'm the representative of Faculty of Communication Arts and Technology. Pronouns are he, him, his, and access needs have been met. Thank you. You don't see any other faculty representatives here. Yes, Wei Chun. Uh, Wait, sorry, what was the question? Sorry, you had your hand raised. Oh no, I forgot to play it down, sorry. It's all right. Health science rep. Hi, this is Nafoni here, the health science rep. My pronouns are she or hers and my access needs are met. I'm just gonna be keeping my camera off. All right, thank you. And I think that is everyone. All right, we are now going to move on to item 4.1, ratification of regrets. Be it resolved to ratify regrets from Manuel Rojas, Tiffany Liu, Charlotte Taylor Bear, and Callie Sterley. Would anyone like to move this motion? Please raise your hand. Sorry, cognitive science moves. Cognitive science moves. Would anyone like to second? MBB seconds. MBBS seconds. We're now on to discussion. I'm going to move to amend to include regrets from Victor Yen, Sarah Wong, Clara Wilmo, and remove regrets from Charlotte Taylor Bear. Would anyone like to second this amendment? Engineering seconds. Engineering seconds. All right, we are now going to move to vote. So seeking unanimous consent, if you dissent, please, um, please raise your hand now.
Alvin, are you dissenting? All right, this amendment carries as this um, amendment carries. So back to the main motion, which now reads, be it resolved to ratify regress from Manuel Rojas, Tiffany Liu, Kelly Sterley, Victor Yin, Sarah Wong, Clara Wilmo. Would anyone like to say anything else on this motion? I don't see there being any discussion. We're now going to move on the move to vote on this motion. So seeking unanimous consent. Once again, if you dissent, please raise your hand. Seeing no objections, this motion carries as amended. We're now on to motion five, adoption of the agenda. Would anyone like to move this motion? Be it resolved to adopt the agenda as presented. Gender studies moves. Gender studies moves. Would anyone like to second? FSU seconds. FSU seconds. This motion is now open for discussion. Yes, Serena. Yes, I would like to amend the agenda to include a motion that I'll post in the chat. I currently have it listed as Black SFU staff and allies letter in my notes. So perhaps that could be the title of it. Um, Good. Could you also please read out the motion for everyone? Of course. So it's whereas a Black alumni was violently arrested at, sorry, by the RCMP after being ID'd on campus and checked for enrollment status on campus, whereas this incident is indicative of the wider issue of big policies being weaponized against Black and Indigenous peoples and people of color and contributes to the further marginalization and distrust between these communities at SFU, whereas the SFSS Council stands and supports anti-racism efforts and for the empowerment and protection of black communities. Um, be it resolved that SFSS counselors who vote in favor of this motion sign on to and support the letter by black SFU staff and allies to condemn the violent arrest of the black SFU alumni and call for an apology by the escalation that led to this violent arrest. Be it further resolved that the council supports the calls for SFU security to do more thorough training for de-escalation, anti-racism, and bias awareness. Um, I'll post the link to the letter in the chat as well. Just give me a second. Thank you, Serena. Would anyone like to second this amendment? Sasu seconds. Sasu second. Is there any discussion on this amendment? Seeing no discussion, we'll move to votes. Once again, seeking unanimous consent. If you dissent, please raise your hand now. Seeing no objections, this amendment carries. We're now back to the main motion, be it resolved to adopt the agenda as amended. Yes, Roland. I would like to move to agend the meeting to include the following motion, which I will post in chat in a moment. Um, copy that over. Oops, that's the wrong window. Uh, titled. Yep, I'm uh, posting it now. Um, titled uh, Condemnation of Board Response Procedures. And I'll read it out. So whereas an alumnus was detained for being asked after being asked for identification and checked for enrollment status on campus and found to be in violation of Simon Fraser University's COVID-19 response policy. And this incident devolved into a violent confrontation between the alumnus and an SFU security officer. 
there it should be posted now, sorry. Um, whereas the race of the alumnus has been identified as a possible factor in the escalation. Whereas the current first party accounts and evidence are inconclusive and full information is still being reviewed. Whereas board members of the Simon Fraser Student Society have actively encouraged the dismissal of statements by the Royal Canadian Mountain Police and have shared news articles which may fail to convey accurate and unbiased view of the incident. Whereas, board, whereas the board of the SFSS released a statement regarding the incident on December 14th, 2020. Whereas this statement appeared to contain factual errors and omissions and calls for very strong policy changes and response. Whereas council was not informed of this statement before its release nor included in its drafting. Whereas the response on social media has been divisive. Be resolved that the council condemns the actions taken by the board in response to the incident by not informing or including council by misrepresenting the facts of their official statement and by encouraging disinformation to the council. Be it further resolved that the council asked the board to retract or amend their statement to more accurately reflect the situation as is currently known. Would anyone like to second this motion? Computing science seconds. Computer science seconds. All right, is there any discussion on this amendment? I just wanna say, I think the full thing didn't get posted. So I'm going to repost in chat for everyone. Once again, is there any discussion on this amendment? Please raise your hand now. Roland, are you asking to speak again? No. All right, we'll move to vote on this amendment. Seeking unanimous consent, if you dissent, please raise your hand now. I'd like to ask that non councillors please refrain from using the raise hand feature until we have moved to discussion. Seeing that this is a contested vote, we will move to vote via roll call. Uh, it's going to take some time, but we will have to vote via brief roll call for this motion. All right. I will just ex expedite things. Brian, addressing your comment in the chat, we have, um, this has been uh, contested to add this onto the agenda to make this amendment. So we will be moving to vote and seeing that we do have a large number of um, non councillors present and we do not have any method for having clear voting aside from roll call, we will be moving to vote via roll call of attendance on amending this to the agenda. Devin, do you have something that you would like to say here, a point of order? Uh, I guess my Contention is just roll in and three points and amendments to the ocean. Uh, the motions directly go against each other, and therefore, I would find it difficult about how we would discuss both in would they be in opposition to each other. Right. So your your, your reasoning behind that. Um, I mean, you are free to talk about that during discussion, but I believe we are now into voting on adding this amendment um, to the agenda. So I will ask that we just move into quickly voting by a roll call to see if we can put this onto the agenda or not. All right, um, I'm going to make this a bit easier. So I will allow you to unmute. However, if any non councillors do abuse this function, we will go back to having to have everyone request to unmute, which will slow down things. Archaeology. 
Uh, we oppose. Bachelor of Environment. Bachelor of Environment. Sorry, um, we we abstain. Behavioral Neuroscience. Behavioral Neuroscience. Oh, sorry, they're not present. Biology. Biology votes in favor. BPK. BPK votes in favor, but not because I agree with the contents, just to amend the agenda so it's a discussion item. All right, thank you. Business. Business votes in favor. Chemistry. Chemistry votes in favor. Cognitive science. Cognitive science votes in favor. Computer science. Computing science votes in favor. Criminology. Uh, chronology of science. Data science. Data science votes in favor. Earth science. Earth science opposes. Economics. Economics votes in favor. Education. Education votes in favor. Engineering. Engineering votes in favor. English. English abstains. Environmental science. Environmental science abstains. Just something to note for everyone who is abstaining. Generally, you abstain when you do not have enough information on a topic to go forward with it. I would like everyone going forward to please consider voting for or against. Abstaining does not mean that you are neutral, rather that you do not have enough information. Environmental science. Sorry, did I call you? Yeah, already called. French. French opposes. GSWS. Gender studies opposes. Interactive arts. In favor. International studies. International studies opposes. Labor studies. Labor study opposes. Linguistics. Linguistics opposes. Mathematic, uh, mechatronics. Approves. You like, please say in favor or. In favor. MBBSU. MBB is in favor. Operations research. In favor. Philosophy. Philosophy is in favor. Physics. Physics and some regrets, sorry. Political science. Uh, the PSSU wishes to abstain. Again, abstaining is not an act of being neutral. It does mean that you do not have information. So I would ask that you vote in favor or against. My apologies, the PSSU votes in favor. Psychology. Uh, psychology votes opposed. Society of Arts and Social Sciences. Sorry, um, SAS is in favor. I forgot to vote myself. I am against sociology and anthropology. 
Sasu opposes. Software systems. Software systems votes in, in favor. Statistics and actuarial science. Statistics. Once again, statistics, please state your vote. Sustainable Energy Engineering Student Society. Uh, the CSS votes in favor. World Literature. World Literature votes in favor. Disability and Neurodiversity Alliance. DNA votes in favor. Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Uh, SAC votes in favor. Students of Caribbean and An African Ancestry. SOCA votes um, against. Women's Center Collective. Women's Center votes against. All right, I'll now tally the votes. Sorry to cut in, can English change our vote from abstain to oppose? If it is acceptable to the rest of the assembly, I will allow this. And just a reminder for everyone to know that we are voting to add this onto the agenda. We are not voting whether or not we're in favor of this motion. Anuki, we are voting right now on whether or not we want to add the motion that was put forth by Roland onto the agenda. Just so everyone knows, I'm not going to tally the votes. One moment. This amendment carries. All right. Back to the agenda again. The motion reads, be it resolved to adopt the agenda as amended. If you want, I will recount it again to give the numbers. It was a clear majority, however.
Yes, as Ryan has put in the chat, that is the correct tally. All right, we are now going to move on. As you can see, we're already at 5.20 p.m. and we haven't even started discussion yet. So I would like us to move forward. Okay, now that we have done, we have completed amending the agenda, we are now going to move to votes on the motion, be it resolved to adopt the agenda as amended. Seeing no further discussion, I'm going to seek unanimous consent. Seek unanimous consent. If you dissent, please unmute or unmute your microphone now. Or raise your hand. I don't expect to see any opposition to adopting the agenda. And there is none, so this motion carries as amended. We're now on to item 6.1, um, six report from the liaison, starting with 6.1, council liaison. Ryan Vansicle, you have the floor. Uh, sorry, I only have access to items that were listed on the minutes, but I'm not sure if that'll be an issue because basically the entire board is in attendance. Um, a new hire was added for the Black Student Support Center. A uh, number of subcommittee minutes were filed, and I believe it was made policy uh, for what was already an unofficial rule that our investment and divestment portfolios didn't touch fossil fuels. All right, thank you, Ryan. Jennifer? Yeah, Vote. I noticed. Oh, yeah, I noticed that Corbett has a direct response, but I will address that in my report. So as always, I'm going to send my written report in the chat. It goes in way more detail. I know we're short on time, so I'll go through this really quickly. Um, please click on those, check out what happened at our December, 20, December 11th meeting. Um, the first link is the actual report of the December 11th meeting. The second link is the compiled report of all of the meeting notes I've taken. There is a meme on this December 11th one. It's surprisingly also relevant to this meeting. Um, anyway, so like Ryan said, we um, create we will create a job description for the Black Student Coordinator and Center. Um, basically, the function of the Black Student Support Office is to provide culturally and racially appropriate support for Black students and advocate, collect, and present info typically not found elsewhere for Black students in BC. And the coordinator role will help with practical support for SOCA, which is the Black student group on campus, students of Caribbean and African ancestry. Um, and it will the coordinator will also help with organizational memory and continuation with a population low in numbers, but active in organizing, supporting students and surviving as Black students, many of whom are international students with lower capacity to organize. And I wanted to give a huge shout out to our at-large rep, Bakis Jama, for her work on this. You can see linked, if you clicked on the bookmark there, it'll lead you down in the document and there's an amazing briefing note. All the documents are there, feel free to read them. Um, about the divestment, it was actually put forward as a referendum question. So students will get to vote on whether um, they want our investments to be fossil fuel free. Um, we also talked about participatory budgeting, which is when members of SFSS or students help decide the budget. So that means that you can decide which uh, projects to fund. Um, I put in here that it's, it's really exciting. I kind of want to delay my graduation to see this. Um, it'll probably be implemented fall 2021 and spring 2022. Um, we also endorsed the motion that student senators brought forward to implement a pass fail grading scheme. We actually got it on the Senate agenda, so they were actually willing to hear us out, which is a huge win. Um, and we might we started a hashtag Dear SFU campaign. Um, so if you have any thoughts about pass fail, connect with me later on that or just go on SFS or social media and find out about what you can do to get your voice heard. Um, we also talked about online learning and student mental health, which is related to that Dear SFU campaign I was talking about. And I believe it will also, it's also on the agenda today. Um, yeah, sorry, that was kind of long, but that's my report. <laughs> All right, thank you. We're now going to move on to item seven, 7.1, letter of support for Let Us Speak campaign. The motion reads, whereas council committed to writing a letter at its December 9th meeting in support of the First Nations Student Association Let Us Speak campaign, whereas in collaboration, councilors have drafted a letter in solidarity 
with the First Nations Student Association, let us be campaign, be it resolved that council approves this letter and that it be given to the FNSA as a part of their letters of support collection, be it further resolved that council's letter of support be sent to SFU administration as a means to hold the university accountable for not including the voices of Indigenous students. Would anyone like to move this motion? Sasu moves. Sasu moves. Would anyone like to second? Economic seconds. Economic seconds. We'll now move to discussion on this motion. If you'd like to speak, please list yourself in the chat. Sack, you have the floor. Where can a copy of this letter be found? Helen, have you posted the link to the letter? Yes, Helen, you may have your direct response. Yes, thank you. I was just going to say that you can find the letter in the Let Us Speak channel on Council's Discord. So Ryan, if you do go to, I think the bottom of the page on Council and it should be under like campaigns and issues, that's where you'll you'll see the hashtag let us speak and the letter will be there. Thank you, Helen. Is there any other discussion on this item? Yes, Helen. Thank you. I just want to say um, thank you again to FNSA, um, Matt for reaching out to council and making sure that council got on board to stand in solidarity with the FNSA and the grievances that are the grievances that are happening on campus in regards to the matter. Um, I, all the counselors that came to our drafting letter sessions over the last two days found this experience to be very rewarding and eye-opening as to what can be done better for Indigenous students on campus. So with that said, I would like to give a shout out to the representatives from BPK, Economics, Psychology, and SFU DNA for coming out and being a part of the initiative. And I want to give a big thank you to all the other counselors that did express and voice their, their support in wanting to write this letter. Um, it's, it's just been a rewarding experience overall. And if this letter should pass with everyone, we will be sending it off to the FNSA to, for it to be a part of their collections of letters of support that you can find on their Linktree website. Thank you, Helen. Would anyone else like to speak on this motion? Yes, Ryan. I imagine this is something that might've been discussed at the previous meeting when we were talking about this letter, um, but just kind of reading through it. Um, I had a quick question, I guess, was there any reason that the SFU um, kind of committee decided to remove the students from the First Nations Student Association or was it just done for some other reason they didn't necessarily discuss? Matt, you have a direct response. Thank you. Are you able to hear me okay? Yep. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, that meeting that happened at the Aboriginal um, Steering Committee, the in the, what was it, the Memorandum of Understanding, there are only two seats that are allocated to Indigenous students, but, you know, lack of consultation and also lack of, you know, information. Um, there's more work put on students, but we wanted more people to be there for accountability as well as support. Um, so when we wanted to invite actual FNSA board members as well, um, they were taken out of the meeting. But more so, we we're trying to push for them to add more FNSA seats and student Indigenous um, seats. Thank you, Matt. Would, if anyone, would anyone else like to speak on this? Motion, please list yourself now. Seeing no further discussion, we'll now move to vote. 
see unanimous consent. If you dissent, please raise your hand now. Seeing no objections, this motion carries. We're now on to item 7.2, the title of which is, one second, let me find the title. Um, Serena, could you just type the title in the chat again for your motion? Um, I think it would be helpful also if you could post it again for everyone. All right, thank you so much. So we are now on to item 7.2, Black SFE staff and allies letter. The motion reads, whereas a Black alumni was violently arrested by the RCMP after being ID'd on campus and checked for enrollment status on campus, whereas this incident is indicative of the wider issue of vague policies being weaponized against Black and Indigenous and people of color and contributes to the further marginalization and distrust between these communities and SFU, whereas the SFSS Council stands and supports anti-racism efforts and for the empowerment and protection of Black communities. Be it resolved that SFSS counselors who vote in favor of this motion sign on to and support the letter by Black SFU staff and allies to condemn the violent arrest of the Black SFU alumnus and call for an apology by the escalation that led to this violent arrest. Be it further resolved that the council supports the calls for SFE security to do more thorough training for de-escalation, anti-racism and bias awareness. Would anyone like to move this motion? MBBSU moves. MBBSU moves, would anyone like to second? Yes, this second. Yes, I see seconds. We're now on to discussion. Please list yourself in the chat. And I would like to remind everyone that we do need to make sure that we are keeping this space respectful and safe for everyone here. And that we won't tolerate any kind of discussion that goes outside of the bounds that we had set at the beginning. If you'd like to speak on this motion, please list yourself in the chat. Yes, Alia, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, sorry, I just didn't want to go first, but I'll go. Um, so my name is Alia, and I am the council representative for the International Studies Students Association. Um, after discussing this matter at length with my fellow executives and other international studies students, we stand in solidarity with the perspective of the Society of Arts and Social Sciences and the SFSS. The reaction to this incident by many students online has been reprehensible, and we call on SFU and SFU security to apologize for a number of things. Firstly, an apology to the victim is the most obvious. SFU and SFU security clearly state that SFU community members must show ID when coming on campus, which was done in this situation. Asking for active class status is not happening on a regular basis. If if I wasn't taking classes that semester, would I also be banned from coming on campus? There would be no effective way to determine if I was an alumni or just a student on a break. Secondly, security did not engage in proper de-escalation techniques according to witnesses. We also cannot continue to pretend that police brutality doesn't exist. We do not live in some fairy tale world where the police are always just and fair. We know for a fact that calling police on black and indigenous students is almost always dangerous. Also, this debate should not be surrounding two things, whether this incident was racist or, or blaming the SFSS. Racism, as many of people of color know, is not a set of criteria that needs to be met. It happens to us constantly, and people of color will be the only ones who will truly understand. Do not speak over people of color on this issue. The fault lies within SFU and SFU security, and I cannot see how anyone can fail to recognize that. The International Studies Students Association stands in solidarity with people of color, especially Black and Indigenous people on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Alia. Um, the chat is filled with lots of support here. So I would like to ask anyone who did want to speak on this matter to please relist yourself. Jennifer. Thank you, Zaid. Um, I'm going to send a few links in the chat now. Um, so 
sorry, there's like a bunch of people listening and stuff. But um, the first link that I will send is the meeting minutes from council. And the second link I will send is the SFSS statement. I'm gonna send them now. So I think we can all agree that SFU security did not handle this well. Whatever your opinion is about the whole incident, it's not okay to threaten specific groups like Black students. Right now we need to focus on people who have been most impacted by the incident like Black and Indigenous students. It is causing further harm and trauma to continually gaslight these folks online. And Council has had discussions and passed motions to support Black and Indigenous students in the past and Black and indi Indigenous folks in general. On September 16th, you can refer to the minutes as well that I linked. On September 16th, we council discussed minimizing police presence on council and how we as a community must be responsible to ensure marginalized folks are safe. On October 14th, we voted unanimously to stand in, stand in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement and acknowledge that Black and Indigenous peoples are disproportionately affected by police and institutionalized racism. Council also voted on November 18th to donate to various Black and Indigenous organizations. I think it's important to remember that we must stand with Black and Indigenous folks. The SFSS statement calls for this, acknowledging the disproportionate effects of police presence on campus for this marginalized community. I hope that today, Council also stands with Black and Indigenous folks in accordance to Council's previous motions, which passed unanimously, to support these marginalized communities. Thank you, Jennifer. There's a lot of people on the list here, so I'm going to first look for our counselors. Um, Serena. Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, perfect. Just give me one second. I wasn't expecting to go next, sorry. <laughs> so, um, if we take what we know to be the facts, there are many points of contention, I believe, that we can all agree with in terms of how SFU security and the RCMP dealt with the situation. So there's a bit a video of the Black alum in security the day previous to the incident saying that he has the right to be on campus. SFU currently has mixed messaging regarding who's allowed on campus during the pandemic, where some SFU communications say alum are allowed and some say just students and faculty. Calling the police on black individuals as we've seen this past summer and as black people have seen throughout generations often results in violence and or death against the black person. Security and the RCMP should have de-escalated the situation instead of risking and causing the black alumni temporary and permanent injuries in the form of trauma. As someone who is trained in conflict re resolution and assists several minutes from the RCMP um, report is inadequate and irresponsible. The escalation could take hours, but instead, after 15 minutes, according to some members of the SSS board, the officer has decided to further escalate the situation by attempting to arrest the Black alumni. I would recommend that we all do some reflection on our experiences as people who are not Black. I think back to the last time I went on campus during the pandemic and no one asked for my ID. I think back to the last time that I was, quote unquote, causing a disturbance on campus. I think about the last time security asked me to call the cops on a marginalized person if I saw them again. I would just ask to all the counselors to take a moment to reflect and think about how you can support black people and have you thought about the suggestions that black students have made so that this situation never happens again. I would advise that we choose to empathize with black people instead of obfuscating a situation that is so obviously abhorrent. Because it is a choice, a choice to either seek ways to help the victim and make sure this never happens again or to deny this and perpetuate institutional racism and violence against black people. Thank you, Serena. Harshvir Kaur. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I'm Arshvir, president of MBB Student Union. And I also want to condemn our security and then our RCMP for arresting our Black alumni, there was no point for the security to call the police on campus. He was not harming anybody. He was not damaging the property and he had gone through the check. So why does this happen? It, there was no point and it clearly shows that it was a targeted arrest. So 
I really want SFSS to just um, kind of condemn this uh, incident that happened. Thank you. Thank you, Arshvir. Sorry, the chat is blowing up here. I need to scroll up to find for everyone listed again. Um, Alumo Roti Soji George, you have the floor. Um, sorry, my camera isn't turning on, but whatever. Um, I just want to say thank you for the people who are supporting right now. But like, I feel like we should um, discuss SFU in general and like the institution and how institutional racism perpetuates itself. I, for one, have always been ID'd when I got into SFU. And I think that we should talk about why Black people and our experiences are always up for question. When I went to um, the face group chat or whatever, I saw that it was just like, there was such a divide and I was so shocked. I was, I thought that we were all for Black Lives Matter now. And now when it is right in your front door, everyone is suddenly ready to play devil's advocate. I think that we should really discuss anti-Blackness in SFU and just anti-blackness in the different minority communities that exist in SFU because it is a thing. I know SFU is a very diverse school and because of that we think that racism cannot exist the way it does but it can. Think about institutional racism and why this is an issue in itself. Think about that period and um, yeah we need to do better fully. I think all of us need to question ourselves and like think what has this year taught us and how do we want to move forward as people who are going to lead eventually. The people who are here in power right now have made mistakes, so many mistakes, and it was so painful to me seeing people go back the same, like the same ideology that got us in the mess that we are in right now. I think that personally, there is so much room for change in SFU. I think that you guys need to listen to people of color more, especially black women and indigenous people because they are, carrying this school, especially Black people, the last, the closest to school spirits that we have gotten came from Usita. When you guys want to have your little fun fair, your concerts, don't you call on Black artists. And now that it's time, it's an issue that Black people are facing, it's up for discussion, like opposed. What, what are you opposing in this issue? That's all I have to say. Um, you guys work on yourself, think about what you want to change and what's your, your role in the world and what things should be like. And just fix yourself. That's all I have to say. Thank you. This is definitely part of a much larger conversation that we do need to be having. Um, as we go on, though, I would like to kind of rein in a bit of the conversation here that we are discussing um, council signing on to this, this letter of support. Um, if we do want to have more discussion regarding um, actions taken by security or um, basically SFU's uh, lack in transparency. Um, we will be discussing that a bit later on. I do just want us to keep a bit back on to, to our motion here. I do see a lot of people are listed um, and we'll continue down that list. Matt Provost. Perfect, are you able to hear me okay? Cool, thanks. Uh, Oki, hello. I just wanna open up by saying that I acknowledge current events have impacted our Black communities on campus, as well as Indigenous communities on campus. I am in full support of the SFSS statement, and I am and will continue to be in solidarity with Black students and the Black community at SFU. As an elected board member, it is my job to represent the whole SFSS community, which includes Black and Indigenous folks who are a part of our community. The situation directly impacts Black students and their ability to feel safe on campus, and I hope this is something we can all agree on. Myself being an Indigenous community member, as well as an ally to our Black student community, I stand by the statements because I believe Black and Indigenous students should have every right to learn in an institution that does not cause harm. We deserve to be in an environment that supports our learning and our academic journey, and one that supports us. And we should not be put at risk or put in situations that induce or cause trauma, this should not have happened, and there is no excuse or justification for violence to be inflicted on anybody. I also condemn any threats, racist commentary, gaslighting behavior that has been made to board members of the SFSS and also allies supporting this. 
um, I would strongly encourage council to sign this letter because I want to reiterate, you know, what Jen has brought up. You can't pick and choose what initiatives that you're for, um, you know, especially with um, the Let Us Speak campaign and all of the, like, especially like Black Lives Matter movements and being in solidarity. This is happening now. And if you're an ally and if you support you know, making sure that Black and Indigenous students in our community feel safe, then I feel like this is something that you can't pick and choose on. You either support it or you don't. Thank you, Matt. Um, just want to note for everyone, please limit how many times you um, type in the chat here because it's getting difficult for me to scroll up and down to find who is on the list. Um, just one second. Uh, Liz, you have the floor. Hi there. Uh, one sec. Okay. Uh, I'm just reading something, just pulling that up. All right, uh, the situation is extremely complicated and there's a lot of unknowns, but there are a few things that we need to act on right away. First, as far as I know, the student was not causing any harm on campus. There are mixed accounts of following COVID protocol. And even if he was not permitted on campus under SFU's current COVID, current COVID restrictions, SFU should be a safe space for its community, especially the BIPOC community who truly needs this guarantee. SFU and campus security failed this individual and many other students who can no longer feel safe on campus. It is campus security who really messed up in this situation. The alum was given permission to be on campus but was arrested the next day. This shows major lack in communication by campus security as well as an unjust attention to BIPOC individuals on campus. I personally have not been to SFU in a while but from what I've heard, most non-Black or Indigenous or people of color students have been completely ignored by campus security. Third, police should not have been called. Students have been asking for police presence on campus to be, to be limited for a while now. And this, instant, and this incident illustrates why. The situation was improperly handled by security and the police only escalated it. Our campaign to limit police presence truly needs to be pushed forward and renewed and as well as clarified COVID restrictions and proper training for campus security. The ESU supports this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Um, as I wrote in the chat, everyone, I'm gonna ask that um, if you'd like to show your support to please use Zoom reactions just so that we can keep the chat a bit clear for me to read who is on the list here. All right, next, um, Anuki. You may have the floor. Um, thank you. Uh, so first of all, I wanna thank all the black students that have spoken on this and put forth the emotional labor. Um, I know how much emotional st stress this can be, especially during um, the times of finals. Um, so like good luck on that. And I hope all of you um, feel better and like you have my support and love. Um, as environment rep, I'm in support of council signing on to this letter, not only because of the previous previous points mentioned by Alia and Jennifer, um, but because of envi because environment em environmental rights are human rights, and I think especially within the faculty of environment, more people should stand in solidarity with Black and Indigenous folks. Um, and they can do that by supporting this statement and actively speaking out against injustices such as this one. Um, I support making sa uh, campus safer for Black and Indigenous students. Um, also, I just wanted to mention that um, some Black students messaged me um, saying they do not feel safe on campus because of racist students, not just because of like the incident that happened, but because of like racist students and them like being, um, I'm just saying a whole bunch of things on Facebook, on um, posts and stuff. Um, and it's, it's really heartbreaking for me to get these messages. Um, and I wanted to mention this because like to those students who are on the other side, like your actions and your opinions can cause harm to marginalized folks, whether you realize it or not, um, especially to black students and indigenous students. 
Um, and this situation is so unfair. So yeah, overall, I support um, council signing on to this letter. Thank you, Anuki. Rich on you have the floor. Um, thank you, Zaid. Um, I fully stand by the statement that we made as the board and wholeheartedly condemn the violent arrest of our Black alumnus. I also condemn the visual statements and comments made online by SFU students and others of our president, also Muhammad. I'm deeply disappointed in our community members who choose to make such comments. They are not only harmful, but dehumanizing. Students have the right to question and criticize the board, but it is never appropriate to treat someone that way, especially in a situation when a Black woman is speaking out against the violent arrest of our Black alumnus. I stand with our president in everything that she said. SFV needs to do better, listen, and take action when safety concerns are brought by our Black community and our president. We have seen the result of when SFV does not seriously listen and take action on a recommendation of our Black and Indigenous community. SFV rightly deserves to be called out on how they handle the situation and the violence and harm to our Black alumnus should not be used as a learning opportunity for the institution. As it is the institution, and I hope that Council today will stand in solidarity with our Black and Indigenous students at SFU, their safety must be prioritized and centered in this situation. Thank you. Thank you. Kayla, you have the floor. Hi, so on behalf of SASU, we fully support signing on to a letter as council. So we have seen intergenerational racism towards Black people and especially on SFU. Every student deserves to feel safe on the campus and no people should be discriminated. So there's a, so last year we do have two incidents involving dangerous weapons. Both times security was lenient and police were called later. So why this, this time police have to be caught even the student have been showing ID and complying with all, re all requirements. So I, there is a system of racism and we should be speaking out against it. And also, although there might be allegations against the black alumni, the security escalated the matter and they should be having the dis escalation training on this type of matters, and every student deserves to feel safe. Thank you, Juanita. Hello. Um, on Safa and as a Safa rep, I do speak on behalf of like um a big percent of the Black students, majority and body, and I feel like. I don't have like an accurate response of what I can properly say and even give it, put it into words. But I do know that the student, the black student body is very much in shock and very much traumatized from the events that have been happening. We have um, from the videos and the information that has been circulating around in social media, from the response by the um, SFU president, Joy, I forgot her last name, and even the death threats that um, the president and the SFSS board president has been getting and the Facebook pages that have been opening up and the, and the threats against like black student bodies and like students, like black students in SFU has been quite staggering and quite scary for everyone, especially for people in my community and everyone that has reached out to me. We, um, we are in support for this motion and for this letter because it is very much important to understand that SFU, as much as it, you can say that it is an inclusive space, it is really not. Um, black students are very much scared to walk around to be, to like are very much scared to walk around to study or even feel safe in a community where they pay school fees, in a community where supposedly it's supposed to be inclusive and is actually be, we're actively working, um, working towards being more um, equity, um, building in, in being a more equity diverse and inclusive university. Not only does this situation and does this event show how, um, how, how, how racist and very discriminating SFU is, but it also shows how there is a whole community of like implicit and explicit biases towards people of color, especially um, people, especially BIPOC and black student bodies there. We see this in by the bystanders who were there when this black student was being tasered, pepper sprayed and um, tasered, pepper sprayed and 
it's even scary to think about the full video. But yes, this was a series of so much events that this black student was there. And as this was happening, the bystanders just stood there and didn't do anything. There was no call to there was no call to action. There was nothing. The de the escalation happened and there was no SFS, there was no SFU student or SFU res. Um, resident residential hall to speak up about this behavior. This just talks about and emulates the whole society that we're in in SFU. As we write this letter towards um, towards the situation and that SFU campus security SF and the police should actually be condemned for their actions, we should also take a deep look about ourselves and how we conduct ourselves in SFU. Are Black students safe? Would you be okay if this was happening to you simply because you were in a West Campus mall? This um this person was being compliant. This person was I, I was ID'd and showed he even had his SFU ID. This is an alumnus that still had his SFU ID. This speaks to something. I feel like we need to take a deep dive and properly take a step back and see what exactly is happening in SFU. Are we okay with what's happening? To what extent can black student be safe? A black student cannot be safe to walk around. A black student cannot be safe to go to the dining hall and eat, especially right now during COVID times. I encourage counselors all over um, right now in this meeting to actually take a deep breath and think about, is this right? Are we really advocating for undergraduate students rights like this? For us not to, for us not to, write, this, to, not to write this letter, are we actively doing our roles and actively serving the student body? Thank you very much. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Devin. I would just like to highlight Serena's focus on putting pressure on SFU and campus security to take accountability and measurable action. Signing onto a letter is a part of applying that pressure, but it's not the end. As mentioned by Jennifer, we have asked SFU to consider how to make campus safer for Black and Indigenous students time and time again. President Johnson's words were empty. It's obvious that SFU does not care about Black and Indigenous students. President Johnson says that she is committed to improving equity and inclusion at SFU, but we have yet to see it. Sending out an email that avoids responsibility, lacks empathy, and misses the mark proves that SFU cares about one thing, lining their pockets, even if it's at the expense of black bodies. We need to hold SFU accountable. While it starts with this motion, it can't end with it either. Our, as a council, we need to continue to address that in addressing racist issues on campus and have been by multiple constituents. Thank you. See, there is David here, um, not Alvin, but uh, David. All right, um, we're going to move on then. Let me scroll back up the list again. Sorry about this, everyone. It's just it's a lot of people listed here. Um, the Brianna retracted hers. It's great that we have so much discussion though. I'm really happy that we have a lot of people speaking up on this motion today. Um, we have a lot of activity today in council. Uh, Charlotte, you have the floor. Hi, um, I just wanna start by saying um, I am white, so you can't see me because my camera's broken, but I just wanted to say that before I tell you guys how I feel about all of this. Um, so I've lived on campus for three years. I've lived on campus throughout the entire pandemic and I've been in all of the buildings during the semester and in between semesters. I've not been ID'd multiple times. On days when I sign in and then I go to Nestor's later to get a drink, I can come back and tell the security guard I just went to get food and they won't ID me again. Um, I've seen dozens of students without masks on inside the buildings and um, everybody deserves to feel safe and as if their health was not at risk during a pandemic. And for that reason, I entirely understand why SFU wants to limit the amount of people on campus and I understand why they want to ask people to have masks on. However, the situation with the alumni was clearly not an example of an individual presenting a health risk to the SFU community. Um, the alumni was not a threat, he had on a mask and he had every right to be there due to the fact that he was quite literally told he had a right to be there. 
The RCMP should only be called when there is a clear, immediate, and serious danger, such as somebody's bodily integrity being at risk. The fact that people are trying to excuse the behavior of the RCMP and SFP security by saying he was living in West Mall, where he put the officer in a headlock, demonstrates that any excuse is trying to be found for this event. Such excuses would rarely, if ever, be made if it was a white person. Um, this is evident in this past year's event where a student brought a fake gun to school, and although the RCMP was called, he was not faced with violence, and he definitely did not end up in the hospital. This is a strong indication of racial bias and institutional level. Black Canadians make up a very small population of the Canadian um, of Canada, of Canada, but they account for, I think, 9% of police shootings and 8% of incarcerated people. The Supreme Court of Canada has acknowledged this. They've acknowledged the, the unique and traumatic history of Black, Indigenous, and other people of color, and I believe that this needs to be a constant consideration at SFU at all levels. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, Ryan, you have the floor. Thanks, Tate. Um, just kind of having you read through the letter and obviously hearing everyone's um, opinions, I think, now, speaking on behalf of SAC, I think we are in favor of the letter and we agree with many of the things that have been said today. Um, in terms of kind of from what I've heard, I don't think I've heard anyone um, in opposition to the letter. And um, I think I appreciate a lot of the discussion. Having read through the letter, I think I'd appreciate council um, you know, taking the opportunity to discuss more concrete things that can be done. I think the letter that was discussed, I think, you know, the SFSS letter was very clear in some of the things that they outlined. Um, but in the letter that's part of this motion, um, I wonder if SFSS can do more to, sorry, the SFSS council that is, can do more to be specific about what sort of things you'd like to see as a result of this. I know a lot of the discussions that we've had have been around some of those things. And I wonder if that can be a part of our discussion item later today about the dining hall incident, which is obviously, I guess, exactly what this has turned into. But um, in terms of this motion, it seems as though everyone tends to be in agreement. And um, I, uh, I think uh, I just like to say that SAC is as well. Thank you, Ryan. Um, you do bring up a good point. I just want to note to everyone that the item we are discussing right now is signing on to this letter. Um, we do have a discussion item later on where we will um, talk about uh, the incident and um, maybe go into talking about council writing their own statement um, or something along those lines. So just a note for everyone. Um, Next on the list, uh, Gabe. Thanks, Aid. And I just want to start off by saying that I condemn SFU's actions. I condemn uh, President Johnson's response. I condemn security. I condemn the Burnaby RCMP. And I also just want to take a moment to recognize the emotional labor that Black students are going through right now. And specifically, the Black students who are here today in this meeting who are still doing the work to fight for Black BIPOC students' rights on our campus, I just really want to take a moment to appreciate all of you right now. And, you know, what I think is the important information to be focusing on right now, despite all the noise that's been happening online, is how SFU security messed up, and they messed up real bad. And the, the point here is that the situation should have never escalated to the point where the police had to be called. When asked to procure an SFU ID, the victim did so yet was asked to leave. SFU security, instead of employing de-escalation tactics that they should have been trained in thoroughly, they didn't, and they decided to call the Burnaby RCMP instead. This is just another clear example of SFU policies being disproportionately applied to BIPOC students. So here's the point of frustration. Calling the RCMP on a black person is incredibly dangerous, and we should all be familiar with this fact that it can be potentially fatal. There was no reason to call the police, especially seeing that he was causing no harm to anyone in any form. If security, you know, if security had not escalated the situation, I truly believe the situation would have ended differently. And, you know, all of this is coming after conversations myself, the board, the president and I have been having with SFU for months about SFU security's lack of cultural sensitivity, anti-racism training, as well as the relationship that the institution itself has with the RCMP. And so I think the important question to ask SFU right now is how can they look BIPOC students in the eye and say that they are safe on our campuses? Because in all honesty, this incident proves that they're not. And you know what the upsetting thing is? Is that this isn't unprecedented. Situations like this 
have occurred on our campuses before multiple times within the last year or two. Even last year, this has been mentioned already, when someone came to campus with a fake gun, the RCMP were literally everywhere. No violent arrest took place. You wanna know why? The individual perpetrating the harm, and they were actually perpetrating harm in this case, was not a black indigenous or student of color. So when we have conversations like these, and you know, videos, online statements come out, we need to trust black people. We need to trust BIPOC people when they tell us that this is an issue. And when we start questioning BIPOC individuals lived experience or trauma that they can never unlearn or unexperience, we are causing harm and people can do that without even realizing it. So I really strongly employ counsel to vote in favor of this motion today, to stand in support and to sign on to these statements. Thank you. Thank you, Gabe. Roland, you have the floor. Thank you, Sage. Um, so on behalf of the College of Science Student Society, I wanna say that you know, in conversations that we've had that we firmly stand with the BIPOC community and certainly oppose all the inappropriate responses and actions that have uh, come from this. And so looking back on the past, what, 30, 45 minutes of debate, it's clear that council uh, certainly wants to move forward with showing our support, um, but I would maybe encourage council to think about how we do that. And if signing on to somebody else's letter that we had no control over is the correct way of doing so. We might have more of an impact if we draft our own letters with our own verbiage, with our own specific statements of how we want the SFSS or rather SFU to improve. And so in the conversations I've had with my fellow board members and with people in my uh, community, we just have some concerns over the verbiage that has been used both in some of the letters and statements being released as well as in this motion currently. Also, um, I'd like to point out that we are over time. So I would like to call the question. I believe you're moving to um... You're moving the previous question, correct? Yes, which requires a second and two thirds majority. Yes, I'm not mistaken. All right. Um, would anyone like to second this motion? Um, calling the question means that we will end debate and we will move into voting. Um, however, someone may also move to um, extend the meeting time um, as well. So, anyone, if you would like to second, you may unmute now. Hearing seconds. Um, in seconds. All right, there's no debate or amendments on this. We're going to vote um, again. So this, this vote is going to be on whether or not we cut off debate on this, on this motion right now, or if we continue. Uh, this does need a two thirds majority vote to, um, to pass. Um, first of all, I'm going to try and seek unanimous consent to see if it is um, acceptable to everyone. So seeking unanimous consent on this motion, if you'd like to dissent, please raise your hand. Again, if this, if this carries, then we will end debate and move forward with voting on this motion. So seeking unanimous consent, if you dissent, please make yourself aware now. I mean, make yourself known now, please unmute yourself. All right, seeing no objections, this motion carries. Um, previous question has been moved and we are going to now end debate. We're now going to move into voting on this motion. Um, again, this is going to be by roll call for the sake of transparency. And also since we do not have a proper poll set up for this. All right, we will go down the list here. 
Again, just so everyone knows, if you abstain, it is because you do not have enough information on this. Um, you may ask questions to clarify, but um, only very, very briefly. Um, and regarding the motion itself, we've already had extensive discussion. So I would like to hear from everyone to either vote in favor or against. So moving to vote. Archaeology is not present. Um, Bachelor of Environment. Um, Bachelor of Environment supports this. Support. Um, actually, I just want to read out the motion again, just for everyone, um, for all counselors, since we did have quite a bit of discussion and people may have forgotten the details. So reading the motion again, um, whereas a black alumni was violently arrested by the RCMP after being ID'd on campus and checked for enrollment status on campus, whereas this incident is indicative of the wider issue of vague policies being weaponized against black and indigenous and people of color and contributes to the further marginalization and distrust between these communities in SFU, whereas the SFSS Council stands and supports anti-racism efforts and for the empowerment and protection of Black communities be it resolved that SFSS counselors who vote in favor of this motion sign on to and support the letter by Black SFU staff and allies to condemn the violent arrest of the Black SFU alumnus and call for an apology by the escalation and that led to this violent arrest. Be it further resolved that the council supports the calls for SFU security to do more thorough training for de-escalation anti-racism and bias awareness. Did I need to vote again or was my vote already counted? Sorry, I just wanted to read. If you do want to change your vote after hearing that again, um, please let me know right now. Uh, my vote stays the same. All right, thank you, Bulkies. Point of information. <clears throat> yeah, hi, point of information. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just want to ask, what is the intent of this motion? Is it for the council to sign the letter as a body? Because Reading not wording of this motion, um, it asks that counselors who vote in favor sign on to the, um, the letter that was posted in the chat earlier, um, as it says, beat resolved that SFSS counselors who vote in favor of this motion sign onto and support the letter by black SFU staff and allies to condemn the violence. So essentially voting in favor on this means that you will commit to signing onto this letter as a counselor um, with the current wording. It does not say that council will sign as a body. However, it does say the council supports the calls for SFU security to do more thorough training for de-escalation, anti-racism, and bias awareness. Okay, because I believe who the person who put the motion forward included as a body, and that's not include like in the chat afterwards. So I'm asking you to recheck this motion with the person who put it forward. Serena? Could you please post again? Sorry to keep asking you that, but if you could please post again the motion as it originally was. Serena, you may speak. Yes, sorry. I'm just gonna repost it into the chat. It might've been a problem with my copy and pasting. Regarding the motion to call the question, I will scroll up to see when Serena did list on here.
Sorry, I just have to erase all the spaces in the lines, but here it is. Um, I just had listed myself in case I made a mistake that I wanted to make an amendment to correct that typo. I'm just going to make sure that I have your motion as correct as it has been typed and posted into the chat here. Is this the amended version of the motion? So this was what it was supposed to be originally. I guess I did make, I'll take responsibility for making that typo. But um, if my list from before calling the motion could be acknowledged, I would just like to amend uh, the first be it resolve clause, I believe it is, um, to read that instead of what I think I originally posted was um, I'm sorry, let me find the words again. I can't read this whole block of text. All right, well, seeing that we did call the question, however, this may or may not have been a typo. What I think I'm going to do in this situation is allow this amendment to be voted on and um, I'm going to allow this amendment to create that, collect that typo to go forward and then be voted upon. Um, if it does go forward though, however, I will not allow any more discussion to occur on this item as we did call the question and we will return back to voting. If that is agreeable with this committee. Yes, Balkis. Your hand is Sorry. raised. Sorry, I'll put my hand down. All right. If it is agreeable with everyone, I will allow this amendment to be made and voted upon before we move directly to voting. Serena, could you please phrase the change in the form of an amendment for the motion? Sure, I'll just type it in the chat. All right, Serena is moving to amend the motion to replace the first be it resolved clause with be it resolved the council and SFSS counselors who vote in favor of this motion sign on to and support the letter by black SFU staff and allies to condemn the violent arrest of the black SFU alumnus and call for an apology by the escalation that led to this violent arrest. Would anyone like to second this amendment? PSSU seconds. PSSU seconds. Is there any discussion on this amendment? Seeing no discussion, we'll move to vote. Seeking unanimous consent. If you dissent, please raise your hand. Yes, Jennifer, this is the vote on the amendment. This amendment carries the main motion now reads, whereas a black alumni was violently arrested by the RCMP after being ID'd on campus and checked for enrollment status on campus, 
whereas this incident is indicative of the wider issue of vague policies being weaponized against Black and Indigenous and people of color and contributes to the further marginalization and distrust between these communities in SFU, whereas the SFS's council stands and supports anti-racism efforts and for the empowerment and protection of Black communities, be it resolved that council and SFS's counselors who vote in favor of this motion sign on to and support the letter by Black SFU staff and allies to condemn the violent arrest of the Black SFU alumnus and call for an apology by the escalation that led to this violent arrest, be it further resolved that the council supports the calls for SFU security to do more thorough training for de-escalation, anti-racism, and bias awareness. Is there any further discussion on this motion? Seeing that we called the question, we will be moving into voting. We will vote by roll call. We'll start again with Bachelor of Environment. <clears throat> Bachelor of Environment votes in support of this motion. Thank you. Biology. Biology votes in favor. BPK. BPK votes in favor. Business. Business votes in favor. Chemistry. Chemistry votes in favor. Cognitive science. Cognitive science student society votes opposed. Computer science. Computing science, science, science opposes. Uh, you may want to check your mic, but I'm assuming you said to oppose, correct? Computer science notes that they are opposed in the chat. Criminology. Criminology is in favor. Data science. Data science is in favor. Earth science. Earth science is in favor. Economics. Economics votes in favor. Education. Education votes in favor. Engineering. Engineering votes abstain. Reminder that abstaining is not an act of being neutral. However, it means that you do need more information. Engineering, is there something that you would like to clarify? Do you need to have clarified before voting on this? All right, I will allow it, but in the future and for everyone again, please remember that abstaining means that you do need more information to make a stance. English. English votes in favor. Environmental science. Environmental science votes in favor. French. Gender studies or gender, sexuality, and women's studies. ASWS votes in favor. Geography is not present. Interactive arts and technology. I have two votes in favor. International studies. The ISSA votes in favor. Is the geography rep present? Yeah, I'm present, sorry. Um, geography votes in favor. Thank you. Labor studies? Labor study votes in favor. Linguistics? LSU is in favor. Mechatronics? Mechatronics is in favor. MBBSU. MBB is in favor. Operations research. ORSU is in favor. Philosophy. 
philosophy is uh, votes against political science. The PSSU votes in favor of this motion. Psychology. Psychology votes in favor. Science, I vote in favor. Society of Arts and Social Sciences. Staff votes in favor. Sociology and Anthropology. Sasu votes in favor. Software Systems. Software Systems votes in favor. Statistics. Statistics votes in favor. Sustainable Energy Engineering Student Society. Uh, CSS votes in favor. World Literature. World Literature votes in favor. Archaeology, I have your representative listed as Claire Wilmo. Are you the new council representative for archaeology? I'm standing in for Claire Wilmo, but you allowed me to vote earlier in the amendment. That was my error then. Um, in the amendment, we did seek unanimous consent. So your vote was not specifically counted. Only counselors are allowed to vote, just a reminder for everyone. Okay, just wanted to double check. All right, Disability and Neurodiversity Alliance. DNA votes in favor. Student Athlete Advisory Committee. In favor. Soka. In favor. Women's Center Collective. In favor. But I just want to clarify the um, other motion put forward today that seemed sort of directly opposed to this motion. Are we still voting on that next meeting or what's happening there? We're going to discuss that right after this. Voting is done. <clears throat> All right, so after tallying the votes, we have what seems to be 34 in favor and one, two, three against and one abstention. This motion clearly passes. All right, so looking at our time right now, we are at 6.30, so we are quite well over time here. Um, if we do want to extend the meeting, someone will need to motion to extend our time today. Otherwise, the rest of our motions would then be postponed to next meeting. Ms. Helen? Yes, thank you. Um, in the interest of getting a thorough discussion out of everyone's motions, I'd like to motion to extend the meeting by 30 minutes or specifically 31 minutes aka until 7 pm I believe this requires a seconder would anyone like to second cognitive science seconds cognitive science seconds all right uh, i don't think there's any discussion on something like this um I'm going to seek unanimous consent. So seek unanimous consent. If you dissent, please unmute your microphone now. Seeing no objection. The motion to extend carries. Our meeting time has now been extended to 7 p.m. Um, regarding some of the questions in the chat, our next meeting is still to be determined. Um, it is quite likely that it will occur in the spring semester. Uh, we won't be meeting again during this semester. As for counselors, um, you are not required to stay on this meeting, but if you do leave and we leave and we do um, drop before levels of quorum, we will not be able to vote on any further motions. 
So please keep that in mind. All right, we are now on to item 7.3. Let me just find that motion again. Condemnation of board response procedures. The motion reads, whereas an alumnus was detained after being asked for identification and checked for enrollment status on campus and found to be in violation of Simon Fraser University's COVID-19 response policy. And this incident devolved into a violent confrontation between the alumnus and a SFU security officer whereas the race of the alumnus has been identified as a possible factor in the escalation, whereas current first party accounts and evidence are inconclusive and full information is still being reviewed, whereas board members of the Simon Fraser Student Society have actively encouraged the dismissal of the statement from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and have shared articles that may fail to convey an accurate and unbiased view of the incident, whereas the board of the SFSS released a statement regarding the incident on December 14th, 2020, Whereas this statement appears to contain factual errors and omissions and calls for very strong policy changes and responses. Whereas council was not informed of the statement before its release nor included in its drafting. Whereas response on social media to the statement be issued by the SFSS has been divisive. Be it resolved that council condemns the actions taken by the board in response to the incident by not informing or including council by misrepresenting the facts in their official statement by encouraging disinformation to the council. Be it further resolved that the council asks the board to retract or amend their statement to more accurately reflect the situation as it is currently known. Would anyone like to move this motion? Cognitive science moves. Cognitive science moves. Would anyone like to second? Computing science seconds. seconds. Computer science seconds. Just a note for Brianna and Marie here, um, you both listed yourself in the chat as well as Sude. Um, do you have a point of order or point of information? Otherwise we have not moved on to discussion just yet. All right, seeing that this has been forwarded and seconded, the floor is now open for discussion. All right. You can already see a lot of people are interested in speaking on this motion. Again, please, while we all may have differing views on this, please do keep things respectful. Um, Alia, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, I just had a little bit of confusion regarding this motion, not necessarily the contents of the motion, but why we would agree to condemn a letter if we have already mostly at least come to the conclusion that this was a racist incident. I'm also not sure what a supposed unbiased opinion would look like if not to claim that this was not a racist incident and that the police, SFU, and SFU security were completely in the right, even though we all know that that isn't true. I'm just, I don't see the point in this motion if not to just completely denounce the fact that we've already come to the conclusion that this was a racist incident. And even like, as I said previously, racism is not some sort of checklist you need to meet. It's not some sort of big bad word that we're not allowed to use, but yeah, thank you. Thank you. I know the chat keeps moving here. Uh, Liz, you have the floor. Hi there. Um... The statement made by the SFSS concerning this incident has been criticized for being one-sided, agenda-pushing, and premature. The statement was released very early on while the case was still being examined. Due to this, it seems to be one-sided, but at the time, their actions were crucial. If the statement had not been made, the news coverage of the incident would have been strongly racially skewed or even absent. The statement brought attention to an important situation and gave students, especially BIPOC students, a voice on the matter. SFSS's job is to represent students, especially those whose voices are commonly and unjustly silenced, and that is what they were doing. The agenda pushing their so-called doing is out of equality and respect for BIPOC people on campus, an agenda that should be carried by every person in this meeting. If you wish to speak for the entire student group, you are here to represent. SFSS was acting to the best of their abilities and at a crucial time. 
and they were doing their job. At the end of the day, they are human beings who get angry and emotional and, the, and this event was troubling. On top of this, we were all students in the middle of exam season during a pandemic. It's hard and we need to recognize that. We may ask for formal apologies from members who have made snarky remarks on social media, but that is, a, but that is separate from the statement they made. The ESU stands by and supports FSS, SFSS. Mistakes may have been made, but they were acting to the best of their abilities and doing their crucial job. Thank you. Wei Chun, you have a point of order. Um, yeah, sorry, the camera just. Yeah, I like, I think this motion, like it nullifies the previous motion. And I think it will be like deemed like legally like nullified um, by law unless like the previous motion is like reconsidered or like amended. Um, Cause it is like, and all of us, the previous one just that just passed. Um, from what I know, uh, this isn't in direct, um, you know, contradiction with the previously passed motion. Um, the previous motion was regarding the statement from was a black SFU staff and allies. Where this motion, um, my interpretation of this is regarding the SFSS statement that was released. So these are two different things. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I, I, I don't think that's a correct point of order. I'll now return to the list. Let's scroll up again. Roland, you have the floor. Sure, thank you. Um, so I want to be clear that this is not a motion that is opposed to condemning the actions that happened. Really what I want to bring forward with this motion is sort of the wider context of how the board behaved when um, putting forth this statement. And so the board actively seemed to put out a misleading statement. They actively sought to sow disinformation to council as we've seen in uh, the discord. And then they actively excluded council when drafting their official letter. Of course, council is well within their right to do this or at least to exclude council as they are the legal voice. But it seems a bit disingenuous that they spent all this time over the past semesters trying to bring representation to council and then turn their back on us. And regardless of whether or not you agree with the statement that they put out, and I think most of us do, uh, this applies to all the statements and actions made by the board in the name of the SFSS. And I think it's reprehensible that the board feels that they can act in this manner. And so this motion is about council firmly telling the board that their actions are unacceptable and that representation communication and factual information are paramount to the SFSS. And so yes, mistakes can be made and the board makes mistakes, council makes mistakes, but we can also go back and fix those mistakes once we know uh, better how the situation is and has evolved. And so this, count, so this uh, uh, motion is just about making sure that the board reacts in a responsible manner. Thank you, Roland. We have two direct responses, first from Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to say that um, Roland is 100% correct. And as of right now, the board does have the jurisdiction to make statements on behalf of the society as we are the legal entity that does represent the SFSS. But council is also well within its right to have an opinion on that and to censure the board if they feel that that is so fit. However, in terms of the actual moat statement that was put out, that was approved by the board of directors because it, before it was put out. Um, in terms of other statements we've put out, the society has put out a number of statements this year, and this is the first time that I'm hearing anything from council um, with regard to the actual processes by which that happens. Uh, another thing that I would like to say is that the motion at hand um, is factually inaccurate. There was no violent altercation between the alumnus and SFU security officer to anyone's, infor to anyone's um, information, nor was that shown in any of the videos that were put out. The only physical altercation that occurred was between the alumnus and the RCMP. So I would like to just note that that is not correct. Secondly, another thing that I would like to note about this motion that is factually inaccurate is that our statement appears to contain factual errors, omissions, and calls for very strong. That part is true that we did call for very strong changes and responses. However, there were no factual errors in this 
the statement and the only omissions that were made was because we did not feel comfortable speaking on anything that we did not have facts on, which I believe is what council wants to post a motion on is to make sure that statements put forward by the Simon Fraser Student Society are factual and they were indeed backed up by videos that we saw and direct communication that I had with Andrea Ringrose, the director of campus public safety. So I would like to um, ask, not necessarily directly to Roland, but I'd like to ask what exactly is factually inaccurate about our statement. Thank you, Awesub. Gabe, would you still like to have a direct response to this? If someone can answer the question first, that would probably be more appropriate. All right, well, seeing that there are no, yeah, seeing as there are no, Oh, okay. Roland has a direct response here. I'll allow it. So speaking to the um, omissions or factual errors that um, I saw and speaking with people who helped me draft this motion saw, um, this mainly concerns sort of the third paragraph where we're speaking about the lack of de-escalation techniques and the assertion of uh, racist intent. Um, based off my understanding and some of the people whom I've spoken with, their understanding is that de-escalation was employed and that um, there may or may not have been systemic racism that was involved in this. Um, and the way that the statement currently reads uh, is much more strongly indicative of these being factual statements as opposed to a more nuanced approach that we would like to have seen the SSS been taken. Sorry, my wife, I cut out a little bit there. <clears throat> um, looking down the list. Also, you may have your direct response. Yeah, and I'm happy to clear up those misconceptions um, as well. So with regard to the first piece regarding de-escalation, um, I think it was our, the sentiment was already shared by a number of councillors with the previous motion, and that if someone is not a threat uh, in terms of to anyone's bodily autonomy and is not threatening harm to anyone, the de-escalation that should have taken place should have prevented the RCMP from being called in the first place. And part of what we want to find out on the SFSS side is what exactly occurred between that time where the security was called and when the RCMP was called. The university has not released any info on that and the university is well within their rights to retrieve that info from the RCMP. So we will be doing some fact finding on that piece. However, meaningful de-escalation would mean that there is no escalation and no violence that occurs. And to someone who is not armed, who is not hurting anyone, then in that case, there would not be the need to actually call the RCMP. In terms of the piece about this being an assertion of racism, I think that was also touched on by a number of counselors and guests in that there is not a current. There is no current mechanism to check if anyone is a current student at SFU. Right now, what is happening is students are simply being asked for their student ID card. However, this individual was specifically asked about their active enrollment status, which is not happening on a regular basis. This is another piece of the fact finding that we will be doing as to how we can make sure that the policies put in place right now are being applied equally to everyone. And another piece that ties us to the racism that black people face is that an interaction with the RCMP is much more likely to end in severe violence or death for black people than it is for other folks. Um, if you would like to argue that, then I don't really have anything to say because that is something that was, I believe one of the reps even had statistics that they'd like to bring up. Um, and I'm not sure if they would like to repeat those. However, that is factual. Um, and what we want to do is we want to make the campus a safe place for members and for alumni and for anyone who's in the SFU community. That was the intention of this statement and that's what we will be continuing to do. Um, and if there are any other misconceptions about our statement, I'm more than happy to answer them. However, there was not anything that we put in there that was factually inaccurate. Thank you. Great, thank you, Masab. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to move back up the list again. Gabe, you have the floor. Thank you, Zaid. Um, there's a few things I want to say. And the first of all, the first of which is to the people who put forward this motion, I don't really think it's fair for you to say whether or not there was systemic racism or not. I think we should leave it up to the Black, Indigenous, and people of color who are actually experiencing the systemic racism themselves to determine that. And in all honesty, it's kind of hard for me to believe that you put this motion forward in good faith when you just voted against the last motion, which had absolutely nothing to do 
with the board statement. It was just a simple motion that council brought forward for council to take a stance on this, to say that there was racism. And in fact, council just agreed that there wasn't, um, that there was racism with the last motion. So I just kind of want to re echo those, um, those statements that, that this motion is kind of nullified. But um, in terms of our statement, you know, all the facts that are in that statement are facts and they were taken from the videos, the RCMP statement and direct, um, uh, you know, things that we heard from people who were actually there when the, uh, the incident happened. Um, you know, the board, we're elected representatives. We have the right to put out a statement to protect our Black and Indigenous students who are members of our community too. If Black and Indigenous students aren't feeling safe, then, um, you know, they're our members too. We have a duty to protect them. And nothing that we put in that statement contradicted any previous stance of the board, any previous stance of council. So I, you know, we were absolutely, I believe, justified in the statement that we put out. But, um, you know, they're just, apologies, I'm getting a bit heated. Um, I think it's just, I, I need to step away for a minute. Thank you, Gabe. <clears throat> Ryan? Oh, which Ryan? Oh, uh, Ryan SSAC. Hi there. Um, I'm actually going to retract my list statement. I've had to attend another meeting, so I haven't been keeping up with discussion anymore. I apologize. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Ryan. Helen. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, so where do I begin? While, while I do understand where this motion is coming from, I can't agree. I cannot agree that there was misinformation in that statement. This poor man, he, he was not committing a crime, but yet he was treated as a criminal. And after watching those videos, I do feel scared and horrified for Black, Indigenous, and BIPOC members, a part of the PSSU department, and for SFU in general. Um, I will say that where I do see the productivity of this motion is that maybe in the future, we could have greater consultation from the board with council in making that statement, as lots of members from my department and other departments have, who are of BIPOC communities have expressed to me their horrors and their fears based on this. Maybe it could have provided a more wholesome stance to the board statement, but it was made with good intention. And I cannot go against that because it was done from the heart and I understand where it was coming from. Um, so I will say to councillors that uh, it's good to have questions and ask about motions like this, but because we had just voted on the other motion, it may not be productive for us to vote in favor of this motion either. Um, and I'm very sorry, Roland, for, for being confrontational in my, in my response here. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. <clears throat> I'm just gonna go up the list again. There's so many messages here. Sorry, guys, it's a bit hard to keep track of everything. Uh, Tony, you have a floor? Yeah. Um... I want to preface that. I want to say that I think everyone is on the same side here. I think I think nobody um, in this year, I think everyone here is for progressive uh, politics and that uh, nobody wants to say that racism isn't a problem or that the intention that Roland or the people um, uh, with Roland that drafted up this motion were intent on saying that um, uh, that racism as a larger issue and all these and, you know, uh, 
and all these uh, and the threats against against, against BIPOC people aren't an issue and that they're, they're not real. But I, I think I think what correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, Roland. I think what the point is of this motion is to keep a sort of accuracy in our accounts of what was going on because you know in hearing the discussions today and I, I'm kind of like switching back and forth between sides and in hearing the discussions we had today there seems to be a lot of discussion on who the individual was relative to the community at large rather than who he is as an individual you know and of, of course there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of information that's yet to be known and that will be that will probably um, come to surface in the following days and I think it's important that uh, we ask ourselves a question um, of the possibility of racial bias in spite of the person's character. Because, you know, uh, and, and of course, reading anecdotal, um, anecdotal evidence from people who actually know the person in question, uh, there are questionable accounts to his character, to say the least. And of course, that's not to say that he should be, des he deserved to be maced or, or, you know, tased or whatnot. But I think that, it, I think that, a lack of information shouldn't warrant uh, an insertion of our personal narratives and our personal biases. Because I think there is, I, I think, I, I think, because I think the board uh, did go into this with a sort of uh, assumed narrative of just begging the question of, yeah, we're gonna go into this. And, you know, I, I don't know. I think that uh, to preface, you no, know, just because the, the, there's a dissenting opinion doesn't mean that we are opposed to the issue at large. I don't think that's anybody's opinion here. And just because we are an ally uh, of the issue doesn't mean we can't be critical and can't be accurate because if we're inaccurate about the situation and it comes out to be that we are inaccurate, then that just hurts the motion and the kind of movement, the progressive movement overall, I think. All right, thank you, Tony. Oh man, I lost myself again in the list here. One second, everyone. Uh, I believe it's Brianna is next. Hi, so obviously to preface, if you can't see me, I am white. And I would like to say a big thing as a white person is it is not our place to decide. Someone mentioned this earlier, uh, whether or not this was a case of systemic racism, whether or not um, black and indigenous and other people of color have a right to get emotional or heated when they're speaking, because it is something I will never understand. And while I do get heated about the topic, I will never understand the emotional impact it has on somebody who actually goes through things like this. And I think it's frankly irresponsible to speak against what BIPOC have to say on something that I will never understand. I also think it's problematic to say we need to wait for an unbiased investigation because there's always bias literally in everything it is impossible to not have bias that will always be present and i think when it comes to the sfss speaking out without speaking to the counselors first based on the vote on the last motion i think the sfss knows how the counselors feel while some people were opposed it was a very strong majority to support what the SFSS had to say. And what I saw posts on social media, including from the DSU that I'm the president of, we were posting before SFSS even said anything. And I saw other DSUs doing the same thing. So I think it was very clear where we stand. Also the SFSS board members and voting and the counselors voted unanimously in supporting Black Lives Matter, have voted to donate money to them, um, have voted, in support of counselors having more of an opinion, but as of now, they were allowed to make that call on their own. But even in a lot of their platforms when running for these positions, it was promoted that a lot of the board members were pushing for BIPOC and supporting marginalized groups on campus. So I think it is their job as the people who are meant to support students to support the students who need it the most. And BIPOC on campus needs significantly more support and they need to be backed because it's an issue of equity, not of equality. And they need a much higher boost than someone like me would need on campus. And I think in saying we need something unbiased and in saying we need to look at what the RCMP are saying and things like that, as far as the SFSS goes, did they lay out an exact play-by-play -play of everything that occurred? Maybe not. But did they say anything that was factually incorrect? Also no, as Osub was mentioning, or Osub, sorry if I mispronounced it. Um, a lot of people online are saying that there's some agenda being pushed by the SFSS, but this isn't new. It's always been very clear where the SFSS stands. 
So I wouldn't say that they're pushing any form of agenda. I would say that they're supporting students who need the most support on campus. And that's not students like me. And it's not a place, the place of a student like me or another white person or even someone who's not black to try and silence black voices on an issue that directly impacts them, not me. All right, thank you, Constantine. Oh, sorry, um, before we let Constantine speak, we um, there's a point of information Uh, hi, I don't know if anyone can hear me, um, but at a request for information about the content of the motion on hand, is the motion on hand about the stance the board took or the procedure in which the board released the information? Because I'm getting a little confused based on what people are talking about. Roland, you have a direct response. Uh, unfortunately, the way that this motion was drafted is it's a bit of an omnibus, um, both looking into the information that the board had put out, as well as the procedures with how they did that or how they failed to do that in terms of uh, communicating with council. With All right, thank you, Roland. Um, Constantine, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll respond to what has already been said is that uh, Ossop has explained that the board still has a few months to do things the way that they decide it's appropriate for them to do. And the thing is that we other people already spoke about this, but there is no unbiased um, information that can be shared ever. White people have a bias of not looking bad and white people know exactly well that being racist is bad. And so they will all be always be biases and everything. We had reports by RCMP, we had reports by news media, and all of them been criticized by other people saying that, oh, it is not up to standards when they were explicitly asking for those at the beginning. There is no getting to the, the bottom of this. There is nothing that white people and non-Black people, non-Indigenous people can contribute to this conversation because we don't know there is nothing that we can say that trumps a single word from a black indigenous person. It is not our place to center ourselves and it is not our place to think that we have something more important to say than the black and indigenous people in this situation and to distrust them and to disbelieve them and to constantly question them, I think is shameful. So I'm urging people to vote against it. Thank you, Constantine. Um, Sude, you have the floor. Yeah, so people are still criticizing uh, the SFSS for uh, pushing a false narrative. And of course, everyone wants to hear hard facts. You know, I do too. Uh, and the SFSS has put out information that is factual. Um, and objectivity is what we show for in our statement. And some people may or may not consider that as objective. And uh, you know, that's depending on their own judgments, perspectives, biases, which makes that subjective as well, just saying. Um, so let's acknowledge that everyone has a uh, bias and there is, there is a difference between omitting facts to dishonestly serve your agenda and selecting facts that are relevant to the situation. Um, that is to say that the past doesn't nullify that this was an unnecessary escalation, okay? Some are calling for uh, the SFSS to acknowledge uh, the alumnus history and behavior prior. Uh, that doesn't matter when someone in distress gets brutalized and we should not be calling for qualifiers. And also you can't uh, say you aren't racist and go and gaslight, uh, insult marginalized folks, especially on social media. Uh, you're putting more labor and trauma on these students. So counselors, please, let's not digress, distract ourselves from the main issue here. Thank you, Sude. Um, Aiden, you have the floor. Yes. Uh, yes, hi. Um, so first of all, uh, I think I, I reacted on the chat there. I shouldn't have reacted that way. I kind of got lost my cool a little bit there, but uh, so that's that's my accountability on that one. Uh, the important part with this is that 
Um, I, I can only speak for myself, but I can assume that most people here, if not all, are against racism. This is uh, not acceptable to use racial slurs or death threats, regardless of what your opinion is on, on, on the perspective of, of the situation. What I do feel is lost in this conversation is the specific incident of this. This is not, this is not to deny that racism doesn't exist. Racism does exist, okay? It does exist. Police brutality does exist, okay? No one is denying any of those two uh, things. Plus there's other uh, specific events that are not, uh, that are negative to our society that we, we must fix. Uh, with, with regards to racism is more than just racial slurs. Oh yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, racism is discrimination, how you're being treated uh, with people being uh, going to the airport, they get search extra um, more than other people. Yes, all that is, I'm trying to in incorporate everything in, in that uh, category here. That being said, uh, with regards to what, oh, uh, I, I don't wanna be personal with this, but with, with regards to the SFSS statement, uh, were there facts that were left out? Me personally speaking, I think there were. The reason being is that paragraph four uh, talks about, and this is the official statement by SFSS, um, Paragraph four talks about uh, the suspect being tasered. There's no dispute that he was tasered, but there is a, a missing component of this was the choke hold. I understand that the choke hold was all in the process of the, this arrest. And of course there was a development that happened and there was a, a conflict that developed up to this point, right? Between the police and the suspect. It's understood, I think from, for, for most people that this is what happened based on the videos that we've seen. Uh, the fact that the choke hold was missing from that, I understand why they would not put that in there because it could be dis uh, distracting to the overall message of it. But leaving that out as an official statement and, you're, and, and the fact that the SFSS is taking an official statement, which by the way, I think most of us support that this is a, a concern. This is something that should be out of time now. Um, it's yeah, been sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up. I, I just think that we need to overall step back and, and try to understand why people are against this. Thank you. All right, Marie, you have the floor. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Aid. Um, first, I'd just like to state that I'd appreciate if people use trigger warnings when bringing up specifics about the situation. Furthermore, as an extension of this discussion, I wanted to extend my solidarity to the Black and Indigenous community as a few, as several of them have received threatening um, statements um, regarding the situation, and I absolutely condemn this. This letter seems as if it is does not condemn the harm against uh, the BIPOC student population, which is worrisome. I do want to say we need to indulge in understanding the implications of security escalating the situation um, like this against Black alumni uh, who aren't perpetuating harm or threat and how it can be a direct threat to Black livelihood and safety on campus. Furthermore, I note that Joy Johnson said it was, it will take time to dismantle systems of oppression. However, change doesn't take time, it takes pressure. So as an ally, I support that counselors stray away from this letter and however apply pressure into making SFU a safe space for BIPOC students and staff by also supporting black labor. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. Nim, you have the floor. Hi, yes, yeah, sorry. I just tried to write something up here. Um, I want to begin by saying that I'm disappointed and disheartened to see the response that some students have towards not only this blatant racist situation, but also their BIPOC peers and board members, specifically the Black and Indigenous students. Um, I think I want to go at this from a bit of a different angle. Um, when we come to university, we expect our experience to be defined by positive learning, ex learning environments and new friends. It's the idea that these are supposed to be the best years of our life. When you're at university, your biggest stress should be your exams and your assignments, not being fearful of having the police called to the dining hall when you were trying to have a meal. So I guess this is more of a question for the people who put forward this motion. Um, 
Please explain to me why you think it is okay that Black and Indigenous students at SFU, specifically those on the SFSS board, have to spend their time here writing statements and demanding that they are able to exist safely in a space that they have every right in, to, to be in. As an institution, how can SFU continue to fail so poorly? And as their peers, how can you let this continue to happen and be complicit in it? Ultimately, as people have said, there's no such thing as objectivity. We live in a biased society. We live on stolen land, our stolen land and our country is built on the backs of marginalized people. Please remember that staying objective means that you have chosen to be on the side of the oppressor. And I think that you need to do better. I'm sorry, like, actually, I'm not sorry. All right, uh, thank you, Nim. Um, seeing that we are at 7.05 PM, which means that we have exhausted um, our extension for this meeting, I'm going to open the floor for anyone to either move to extend or move to um, call the question to put us into voting for this motion. The floor is open. DNA, Serena can move to extend. How long would, would by what period would you like to extend this? Uh, by 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Would anyone like to second? Environmental science seconds. Environmental science seconds. All right, we're going to move to vote on this then. <clears throat> I'm gonna seek, you know, misconsent. Seeking unanimous consent, if you dissent, please raise your hand now. Seeing that we do have dissent, we will then move to vote on this. Okay, I'm just gonna ask quickly, um, we do need a two third majority or um, just a simple majority for um, extending this meeting? I believe it is just a simple majority, but let me double check that. All right, in the meantime, we will then move to vote by roll call of attendance. Um, yes, thank you, Jennifer. Um, we are voting to extend the meeting time. Um, we're not voting on the motion itself. Um, we'll also be able to see if we do have quorum still by uh, doing this. So starting off with Bachelor of Environment, are you in favor or against extending our meeting time by 30 minutes? I guess I'm going to have to see if they're still present. Bachelor of Environment. Sorry, I'm just having trouble unmuting my um, microphone. Uh, I vote in favor, I guess. Biology. Biology votes in favor. DPK. DPK votes in favor. Business. Business is opposed. Chemistry. Chemistry votes in favor. Cognitive science. Cognitive science votes opposed. Computer science. Computing science, Computing science in favor. Computer science needs to fix their mic. Criminology. Criminology votes in favor. Data science. Data science votes in favor. Earth science. Earth science votes in favor. Economics. Economics. Economics, are you in favor or against extending the meeting time?
seems they're not present right now. Education. Education votes in favor. I uh, just want to note I may have to jump on to another meeting. Great, thank you. Engineering. Engineering opposes. English. English is in favor. Environmental science. Environmental science is in favor. French. I think French is no longer here. GSWS. Sorry, um, she had to leave. She had work. Um, yeah. Geography. Geography is in favor. Interactive arts and technology, or yes, interactive arts and technology. International studies. International studies votes in favor. Labor studies. Linguistics. Linguistics votes in favor. Mechatronics. Mechatronics votes against as indicated in the chats. MBBSU. MBBSU votes against. Operations research. ORSU is in favor. Philosophy. Philosophy is in favor. Political science. Uh, political science votes in favor. Psychology. Psychology votes in favor. Science votes in favor. Society of Arts and Social Sciences. Sociology and Anthropology. Sociology and Anthropology. Software Systems. Software Systems votes in favor. Statistics. Sustainable Energy Engineering Student Society. CSS votes in favor. Um, did you, did you get that? Yeah, I got that. Oh, okay, sorry, just making sure. Yeah. World literature. World literature votes in favor. Disability and Neurodiversity Alliance. DNA votes in favor. Student Athlete Advisory Committee. I think Brian had to leave. Soka. Soka, are you in favor or against extending the meeting time? We are in favor. Women's Center Collective. Women's Center is in favor. All right, voting is not complete. We have 25 in favor and one, two, 
Well, 26 in favor and four against. <clears throat> so that's clearly over a two third majority. Our meeting time has been extended by 30 minutes from this minute now. So yes, we will be extended until 745. However, I would like to wrap things up by then. <clears throat> All right, we are still continuing discussion um, on the last motion. I'm going to ask that everyone relist themselves. All right, Olumoroti, you have the floor. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I just want to first of all say that it's very interesting to me, a black man, that the work done by a black woman is being up for question. And I understand accountability to a board. I truly understand that. But I truly want everybody to look at the politics that is going on in this. Look at the people who are suggesting that this happens. This is not an attack against you, Rowling, that you may feel like it is. But think, why did you suggest this? What was the point? And could you have done this at a better time, especially when we just voted for a motion to go for this? And like, just think about that. I think that truly there is some work to be done with accountability. And I'm going to say this again, check on yourself. And with <laughs> bias and policing in Canada, um, the RCMP is not the genuine um, institution you would want it to be. It has never been. And they lie a lot. So especially regarding arrests of people of color, I have personally seen a lot of people that I that won't that don't belong in this campus, people that would have come up here from the downtown east side. And it's not my job to police them, but I have realized that I have never seen any of them get tased or pepper sprayed even when they have gotten violent. And someone also brought up that little white boy that came here with a fake gun that was also not tased or pepper sprayed. So you knew this happened to a black man and you asked for more facts. What more facts do you need? What unbiased opinion do you need? Um, this is not an attack on you once again. It's an attack on what you did and how it looks to me and the rest of us. And I'm also not going to pretend that I did not see the other two men who were supporting this man and his belief and what he wanted to do, especially regarding the work of a woman of color. I'm kind of done with this meeting right now. I'm very, I like the discussion that has happened, but I hate how it has come to place. But like, I genuinely feel like there's so much work to do. And Roland, you really need to just think about what you did today. Like maybe your intentions were not bad i'm not going to call you out as a bad person but like think about how it looks to me a man of color think about how it looks to the president of the sfss a woman of color so who is also black both of us black people so yeah i hope you guys have a nice evening thank you Oh, that was that was an emoji. Sorry, I saw what Gabe put up on his screen there, and I, I thought he raised his hand. Um, yes, there is obviously a lot more to this discussion that we will ever be able to have in, in one meeting. Um, we're going to now move on. Next is um, Ryan. Uh, is my microphone all right? Yeah, it's fixed now. Okay, so speaking directly to the motion, which would be that council asks the board to retract or alter their statement that was given out. I think I speak, well, I don't think, I speak for a lot of students because I've seen probably over 100 posts by now from students expressing that the SFSS seems to be acting essentially on their own without any prior input from the students and in such a way that they're ta taking a leap of faith, I guess, by uh, handling a situation in which we don't know all the facts by clearly picking a side and students feel that this is inherently misrepresentative of those students and I think it's very telling that in the process of this discussion 
uh, speakers have attempted to tell white students that they should have less input on the matters at hand or uh, to go out of the way to dismiss students' concerns for being, you know, invalid opinions. Uh, we are required to represent all of our students, not just the ones that we agree with. And I think that in their actions, uh, by releasing this letter, when they did, how they did, the board failed to account for a large portion of their student body. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Brianna, you have a direct response. Yeah, so on your note of saying, I kind of forgot your exact wording, but of like not listening to white students as much, uh, they shouldn't listen to us at all on this topic. We don't, we shouldn't have anything to say on here. I don't know what it feels like to be a black person confronted by the police. I don't know what it feels like to be in that position at all. Therefore, it's not my place to say how they should react. It's not my place to say whether or not his reaction, his fear response was appropriate. It is not at all our place to have something to say in that. And I'm speaking to you as a white person. It's not where we're supposed to talk. Our job is to use privilege that we have to amplify BIPOC, not to smother them and speak over them because society is already going to listen to us much more than them. So we take that fact and we use it to make them heard. I'm not saying that you're white. Brianna, I'm going to cut I'm you off saying... here. Um, mm -hmm. When it comes to direct responses, generally it's something that is like direct to you. Um, if you would like to speak on this, I'd like you to list yourself in the chat, however. Um, generally, if it is something that's a personal remark or comment that is um, directed towards someone specifically. So as you are in the list, um, you will have to wait your turn. turn. Sorry about that. Gabe, uh, you have a direct response. I do. It is not the job of the student populace at large to tell people what they should be feeling. White students do not get to talk about or understand in any way what BIPOC students are feeling. So can I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm actually quite horrified by what was just said. You know, BIPOC individuals are historically the ones who are suppressed, their voices are not heard. You know, the majority of this board was elected because these voices have been ignored for so long. We were elected to do that work. We continue to do that work. That's the work that is represented in this statement that we put out on Monday. And we're gonna continue to do that work. I don't think this board has any intention on retracting the statement and nor should we. We're standing up for what we were elected to do and people elected us to stand up for the voices of BIPOC students. So I, you know, I'm, I'm just tired of this, this, th this is equivalent to like an, the all lives matter rhetoric that we've been hearing that is, is really, really harmful to BIPOC individuals. So please, please just cut it out. Also, do you have a direct response? Yep, and my direct response is um, with regard to Ryan's points, but I just wanted to reiterate them and then ask Ryan for clarification in case I am not clear. But Ryan was asking, um, particularly with the statement in terms of consultation mm -hmm. and the posts that were being put up on places like Facebook and particularly Reddit um, that had different views as to what the SFS statement was. So um, uh, I want to ask the chair if I can ask for clarification from Ryan on that. Ryan, would you like to directly respond to that? Uh, I'm unsure as to what is being asked right now. I just want to make sure that I heard your question right as it was some time ago, and I want to respond. Uh, yes, I was specifically speaking about the board's actions and the social media response from other SFU students. Yep, all right. In that case, um, my statement to this is this is a multi-pronged thing. Um, if we were able to have a meeting and consultation with all 26,000 undergraduate students at SFU, that would be great. However, that's not plausible, and that's why elections do happen. Um, I never made it a secret as to what my values and beliefs were, neither did anyone else on the board when they ran for elections. That's why there is a board of directors. Is it um, a perfect? No, that's why we looked into a new system that were passed with the current bylaws in which there would be a greater board. However, at the same time, we still retain the, as, as of right now, up until the future board term, which is going to start in May, the board does retain the right to make statements on behalf of the society, which I know I addressed earlier. 
Um, with regards to comments that we hear from students online, um, we've been engaging in discussions with students on a regular basis. Um, this is not including, a, I've received a number of emails that I have actually had discussions with students and had discussions via Facebook, email, et cetera, because I do want to hear from students and hear their thoughts. Um, this is not inclusive of the threats that I've been receiving. I would like to note um, this may or may not be um, from students because I cannot verify, but I have had alumni, particularly a past board member, uh, send me an email and I really would ask folks um, to excuse me for my language right now, but calling me a stupid bitch repeatedly and saying that if I don't shut the fuck up that he would make me. So I would like people to please take that into account as well and that when the SFSS puts out statements, we don't do it lightly and we do it with the facts that were given to us and we do it in the way that we think is going to protect our students. If you don't think the actions that your board currently is taking is protecting your students, then you're more than welcome to vote in another board. But as of right now, until that happens, the SFSS will continue to do what we can to protect students. So thank you. Thank you, Asa. Um, just for everyone, I'm seeing that this discussion is not being generally constructive, I think, right now. Um, I do want to kind of redirect us to the motion at hand um, regarding um, you know, voting on whether this is something that we want. Uh, sorry, I for, I lost where the motion was at. But um, I just I just really want to direct our conversation back to to the motion because it is getting a little bit. Um, you know, it's not being very constructive. I I think um, where we're at right now. But thank you also for your response and thank you for the discussion that's been going on. So I'm gonna go back to the list again. Serena, you have the floor. Serena? Yes, sorry, my computer's a bit slow. Um, I, I bring this back to the motion. I just discussed with information that the SFSS statement um, included was saying that this was a racist or that this was a race, racist incident and that this may or may not have been racism. Um, I just like to state that it's not for people who do not experience racism or who are not black to decide whether an incident is racist or not. Racism is also never unbiased, by the way. So any news source that you see will always be biased. Um, I think we, that we need to prioritize the lived experiences of black people, as I stated before, who have endured this type of violence for centuries. Also, I just wanna point out that prefacing your statements with saying that everyone agrees that racism exists does not nullify the harm that you are doing by making statements that deny people that deny black people's experiences and their experiences of being racially discriminated against specifically. If your statements have specific and cause greater harm to a specific group of people based on their race, perhaps that statement is racist. Thank you, Serena. <clears throat> Alvin. Given the board's clarifications, engineering will not condemn the board for their quick statement. They are elected representatives of SFU, and as a result, they, sh they know everything that's happening within SFU, or rather, they are very well informed. So instead, I think since council is transitioning to be the new board of directors, we should definitely be more proactive in cooperating with our executive team, the presidents and the VPs. Thank you, Alvin. Uh, Joshua Fang, you have the floor. Um, so yeah, so just to preface, um, I just wanted to first off say that I don't agree with anybody that has been sending any threatening emails and I do want to say sorry that you guys are receiving those. Um, and the second thing I wanted to mention is that I'm still learning a lot about what SFSS is doing and um, so yeah I'm still in a process of learning but the one thing that I did want to say, um, and I don't necessarily agree with the motion either but I do think that there should be some sort of increased um, accountability in the sense that um, so on Friday night, I was at West Mall when a portion of that incident happened. And I think when I saw the statement, I was a little bit um, shocked because it made it, it was very different from what I saw that night. Um, and I very much am understanding of the fact that there are a lot of issues that are at play here and that it's not just a very one-sided problem. There's a lot of different things that are happening. Um, but I did think that the statement was yeah, pretty 
for lack of better terms, maybe a bit of a knee jerk reaction. Um, and I did think that there were opportunities that potentially could have been had where um, further discussion could have been had in terms of what actually happened before some of those statements came out. I am not in any way advocating for the use of force that happened or anything like that. But I do think that um, that situation needed to be handled somehow um, because the people that were there, not only myself, but other people that were there all felt um, pretty unsafe, to be completely honest. Um, and so I'm not sure what the solution to this is, but I do think that that statement that was put out, um, there needed to be some sort of edit or maybe asking even like in a Facebook group, like if you were there that night, like, could you message us and let us know what happened or like some way of gathering more information before just blatantly coming out and saying like, oh, this was a racist situation or things like that. Or like, um, you know, if it was, um, yeah, but like if it was a racist situation um, or some other way of gathering the facts before coming out with that. And then I think there were a lot of tweets that were like, oh, SFU is like a shitty institution. Sorry, I, for lack of better terms, um, or like things like that. I saw all that. And to be honest with you, like, I think if saying that from that certain event um, for me is, I think, a little bit of a, a reactive statement. Um, and so I do think that um, I, while I don't necessarily agree with the current motion, I do think that some sort of increased accountability be, would be beneficial. All right, thank you, Joshua. Connor? Um, hi there, I just wanted to um, re-center uh, us on what we're talking about with the motion. Um, we, the, it was called in the question, um, the president's, um, the, if the information was correct or not. Um, and it, like, there's no incorrect information present in that motion, sorry, in the letter. Um, I feel like that uh, a lot of this conversation has begun to, we're talking about now racism as like an institution and not whether or not this letter should have been sent from the board. So um, I am in support of this letter. I think it should be, should have been sent. Um, whereas at the beginning, I was very, um, I couldn't uh, make up my mind. And I think that for, it's a very white thing for us to be able to sit here and say, no, we should have waited for some more information before we talk, spoke on behalf of persons of color. So I think that uh, I'm not sure if that we can be moving uh, to motion this or not, but I don't think that the adjusting the statement as is should be something that we're doing right now. Thank you, Connor. Um, I do have to agree that we are kind of going off topic here. And honestly, I don't see any of the discussion that we're having here to be something that um, is, I guess, constructive to a sense. I think that we've kind of um, exhausted this, this conversation. Um, and I, I think I'm going to call it now that um, we're going to be moving to, to motion. Um, we're going to be moving to vote on this motion now. Um, I don't, I don't think, I don't see it being helpful or any other kind of clarity coming out for the discussion. And we are very, very over time here. So I am going to put us forward for, for voting. Um, yeah, I'm going to motion to call the question here. Uh, if anyone would like to second. Computing science seconds. Computer science seconds. There's no discussion on this. I'm gonna seek unanimous consent. So seeking unanimous consent, if you dissent, please raise your hand. All right, seeing no objections, we are now going to vote on this motion. All right, we will be voting via yeah, roll call once again. <clears throat> Starting with Bachelor of Environment, they are still here, they are not. Biology. Biology votes in favor. BPK. BPK votes against. Right, as um, Aliyah has noted again, um, it has been quite a bit of discussion here and some of us may have
forgotten what the main motion reads. So actually, before we do finalize everyone's vote on this, I'm going to read out the motion once again. All right, condemnation of board response procedures, whereas an alumnus was detained after being asked for identification and checked for enrollment status on campus and found to be in violation of Simon Fraser University's COVID-19 response policy and his incident devolved into a violent confrontation between the alumnus and an SFU security officer, whereas the race of the alumnus has been identified as a possible factor in the escalation whereas current first party accounts and evidence are inconclusive and full information is still being reviewed. Whereas board members of the Simon Fraser Student Society have actively encouraged the dismissal of the statement from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and have shared articles that may fail to convey an accurate and unbiased view of the incident. Whereas the board of the SFSS released a statement regarding the incident on December 14th, 2020. Whereas the statement appears to contain factual errors and omissions and calls for very strong policy changes and responses. Whereas council was not informed of the statement before its release, uh, nor include in its drafting, whereas response on social media to the statement issued by the SFSS has been divisive. Be it resolved that council condemns the actions taken by the board in response to the incident by not informing or including council by misrepresenting the facts in their official statement by encouraging disinformation to the council. Be it further resolved that the council asks the board to retract or amend their statement to more accurately reflect the situation as it is currently known. So just to clarify for everyone voting in favor of this means that you are voting in favor of condemning the actions taken by the board in response to the incident and also to ask the board to retract or amend their statement. So biology. Biology is in favor of the motion. PPK. PPK is against the motion. Business. Chemistry. Chemistry votes against. Cognitive science. Cognitive science student society votes in favor. Computer science. Computing science, 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 science. Criminology. Like Criminology votes against. Data science. Data science votes against. Earth science. Earth science opposes. Economics. Economics votes against. Education. Education votes against. Engineering. Engineering votes against. English. English votes against. Environment, uh, sorry, environmental science. Environmental science votes against. French is no longer present. Nicole. Oh, sorry. Geography. Geography votes against. Interactive arts. International studies. International studies votes against. Linguistics. Mechatronics. Mechatronics votes against, as indicated in the chat. MBBSU. MBBSU votes against. 
operations research. What is your what's against? Philosophy. Philosophy goes in favor. <clears throat> Political science. The PSSU opposes this motion. Psychology. Psychology votes against. Science votes against. Software systems. Software systems votes against. Sustainable Energy Engineering Student Society. CSS votes in favor. World Literature. World Literature votes against. Disability and Neurodiversity Alliance. DNA votes against. Student Athlete Advisory Committee. I don't think Ryan is here. No, Ryan is not. Soka. Against. Women's Center Collective. Uh, votes against Women's Center. All right, I am going to tally the votes quickly. All right, we have 23 against and five in favor. So clearly this motion fails. <clears throat> All right, seeing that we are almost at the end of our time today, um, we are quite over time. I'm going to move to postpone the remaining discussion items for our next meeting. Would anyone like to second? World Lit seconds. World Literature seconds. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we're going to move to vote. Seeking unanimous consent, if you dissent, please raise your hand now. Seeing no objections, the motion to postpone these items until our next meeting passes unanimously. On to announcements, uh, item nine. Our next council meeting is to be determined. Um, I will put out um, a vote in our Discord to determine our meeting next semester. Um, we will not be meeting again this month. Um, attachments, we have attachments for one of the discussion items, which has been postponed. We are now on to our last item now, 11.1. .1, be it resolved to adjourn the meeting at 7.43 p.m. Would anyone like to move this motion? Economics moves. Economics moves. Would anyone like to second? Biology seconds. Biology seconds. Don't think there's going to be any discussion. It's been a very long meeting, a uh, very tiring day. Um, I had a final in the morning, plus I had to take my brother for COVID testing. So I'm really ready to go to sleep. Um, I'm going to seek unanimous consent on this motion. Seek unanimous consent. If you dissent, please raise your hand now. Seeing no objections, this motion carries. Be it resolved to adjourn the meeting at 7.43 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you for this meeting today. It's been a very long meeting. Um, there was a lot of discussion. Towards the end, it did get to be quite, uh, I guess, not constructive, um, but we did pass our motions here today and get a lot done. So I'd like to thank everyone. Have a great break and I will see you all in uh, next semester. <laughs>